Dope is what flows in this fam's DNA. Dope is what flows in this fam's DNA. What's good, everybody? Welcome to Dope Interviews brought to you by the Mighty 19 Media Group. I'm your host, Warren Shaw, and we are continuing our season five vibes or friends and family. If you're watching, you already know what it is. It is my guy in the virtual building, NBA journalist, media producer, podcast producer, good dude all around, extraordinaire, Jabari Davis. Jabari, welcome to Dope Interviews, my guy. How you feeling, family? Hey, I appreciate you telling lies on my behalf right off top. I appreciate Stop it. I appreciate it. <laughs> nah, you thank, thank you for having street. me, man. Thank you for enjoying, uh, for inviting me. Of course, brother. You are the man in these streets and always will be. You know, I'm so excited to be able to have a conversation with you, get a little bit deeper into your, you know, background as you've come up into this media space here. Um, you are by 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 all people's accounts, you know, one of the, the good guys in the industry. And I mean that sincerely. So, you know, I appreciate you taking this uh, this time with us here on this 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 morning uh, to kind of tell us a little bit about your journey. family. really, really, really do. So I'm I'm not just being humble, but I'm humble, man. Like, truly. <laughs> So, uh, you know, we've had conversations here and there, but I don't think I've ever really asked the question. So I'm going to start from this point. Are you like most where you had um, those dreams? You know, did you want to be a hooper? Did you want to be a baller? Did you wish you were a little bit taller the whole nine? Did oh, you have Gilo. sports dreams of, you know, taking your athletic prowess onto some sort of court or field before you actually got into the media space? I did. Like most people, you know, when I was, you know, 12, 11, you know, 13 you know, th and beyond, I thought, mm -hmm. hey, man, you know, my my jump shots are, you know, pretty nice. I'm a lefty, you know, like <laughs> I'm living out here and like, you know, out there at the time in Los Angeles. So I'm, I'm, I'm Nick Van Exel. Like, that's me, Ooh. you know, <laughs> but it, it, it wasn't in the cards. And the reality was, you know, I only grew to you know, about five, ten. You know, we, 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 we finally met in person. You've seen that. Um <laughs> And you know, ain't too many five ten, uh, ain't too many five ten power forwards. So mm -hmm. you know, it, one thing led to another, and and, and I realized my uh, basketball career was probably going to end. You know, once I went to college. Fair enough. So, what sparked the media side for you? When did you realize maybe this could be another route to keep you adjacent to sports in some capacity? As funny as it's going to sound, it it was it was actually sparked by an argument with an ex stop now it, really no and 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 it wasn't one of those like you know it wasn't like you know, like it's a crazy argument it was more of you always talk about basketball and i'm not joking with you this is a direct quote why don't you start a blog or a website or one of those things <laughs> and this is you know december 2011 and i'm you know sitting there frustrated and said well you know what i will <laughs> now i didn't know what you know, like I mean, I knew what a website was. Obviously, I you know, like I grew up in the internet age. Uh, you know, I came of age during the internet age, but I had no idea like how to create one, what will go into that, uh, let alone what to put on it. You know, what <laughs> you know, you know, once I did it, but you know, one thing led to another. I started a website called Real Talk on Sports. I even the name was corny as all hell. Um, uh, you know, the, the writing wasn't quality, but it was passionate. And as crazy as it's going to sound. That has been the driving force behind everything that I've done within this space. Hmm. It's just passion. It, it isn't necessarily skill or, you know, or, you know, like the ability to I, I, I've always just been one of those people that if I wanted to try something, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go after it. Worst case scenario, it's kind of like it's kind of like being scared to ask you know, for something. Worst case scenario is you say no. Worst right. case scenario is, you know, you just don't you, just, you don't quite reach your goals. But. So far, so good, I would say. But yeah, no, basically it was started a website. Um, wasn't, you know, like I said, it wasn't the greatest you know, uh, level of writing, but it, you know, like people could see that there was some passion and at least a little bit of knowledge behind it. And I'm not going to lie to you. I'll go through the whole journey because my path is not traditional, but mm -hmm. I had to write it down. So I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll allow you to break. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll uh, go, go through it as it comes. But I, it, it, there's so many steps along the way uh, that I actually had to write them down. Because no, like, man. Well, looking back I mean, at I, it, it doesn't make sense. One hundred, one thousand percent. Obviously, want to get into it. So, I think you know when you, when you start your first your first website, so to speak, right? It's it was it was it general NBA because that's what you know. You and your girl had the argument, right? You said it's yeah. you're always talking about always talking about hoops or whatever the case would be. You remember your first article? What's the first article that you wrote? It was general NBA, but then I mixed in like a little bit of NFL. I wrote an article 
comparing like the drive of like all time greats like across sports. And that's I your think first I, article. That was my very first article. I mean, I didn't know what I was doing, and I was like, "Hey, I mean, but that's I, what brought hell of a topic." You know what I mean? That's that's like a research paper. <laughs> it it, it, it kind of was. It kind of was, and that's how I envisioned the the website at first, like kind of like mm -hmm. long. What is known now is like long form articles. You know, uh, you know, after a substantial amount of research and introspection, you know, all, all of the, all, all that goes into writing. So it was a comparison of Kobe, Derek Jeter. Um, I can't even remember now, but basically guys that, oh, like Tom Brady at the time, uh, wow. guys that had you know, reached a certain level of greatness and had maintained it for an extended period of time. But anyway, that article got the attention. And, you know, um, in, in, in modern times, uh, I, I, I realized that uh, there are some. Um, well, basically, I worked for a website that is no longer in the good graces of of of, of of folks out there um but it was a good but it was a good experience um that basically led to an internship opportunity with sheridan hoops um because they saw that i had been doing like a weekly power uh, nba power rankings you know like you know, for the better part of of that of that first season mm -hmm. um that opportunity now, this is where I, I like I was completely in over my head and had no idea what I was doing, because it was one thing to be asked to write about uh, different things. I, we all have opinions. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's some, that, you know, that, that's easy. All of a sudden they were like, we want you to be a podcast producer. And I said, what's a podcast? <laughs> so we're talking 2013 you know, or no, excuse yeah. me, 2012. I had no idea what a podcast was at that point, which that which feels crazy to say at this stage. But, you know. Grace and, and that God, was that was with yeah, that was with Chris Sheridan. Um, you know, got to basically learn the business, you know, during that, you know, during this process, uh, you know, because and and what I mean by that is, you know, how things go. Sometimes thing, you know, people are awesome in this field, and sometimes people can be jerks in this field. And yeah, you, I got a, I get a, I got a, a, a wide variety of experiences from the, you know from that opportunity. So. Yeah, no, like, it, like it really was like an incremental step by step deal, you know. That's where I was, you know, going towards the end of 2012. Man, and I think in a lot of ways that was the uh, the genesis of the the true boom of of the podcast industry, specifically probably in sports. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you fast forward, you know, 10, 12 years here now, and you know, everybody and their grandmother has some sort of sports podcast you know, with various degrees of success. And I mean, and, and everybody shoot your shot. You know what I mean? There, there's, yes. there's enough room in here for everybody. But I think, you know, being in the uh, kind of one of the pioneering stages, in some ways, I think, um, you know, and I don't want to maybe put too much on it, but maybe in some ways propelled you, you know what I mean? Because you've been doing oh, yeah. it for a very, very long time. And, you know, again, not everybody was doing sports podcasts. I remember, and we're kind of jumping around here a little bit, but I do remember when, the yahoos and the espns got into it yep. and being in certain spaces you know when i was on my come up if you will as a an aspiring journalist being in the room and hearing some of our well-known guys who will remain nameless here on this show i heard them complain ah oh, now, now they want me to do some effing podcast and i got yep. you know what i mean and to see how that's transformed so many years later to where like well that really is kind of a standard thing like you you need a podcast especially if you're going to be on a major network what are your thoughts on kind of like how that you know kind of just went from like oh kicking and screaming to people doing it now it's almost a necessity uh yo know, you hit it on the head it, it, it absolutely is a necessity at this point if you're going to be in this space in this space it doesn't you know like your know, writing is great uh, you know, being, you know, they having the ability to storytell is fantastic to report, you know, break news is great. Uh, but you also need a platform for that. And generally, that, you know, you know, generally that, you know, that, that comes in podcasts or video casts, you know, or some combination yeah. of, 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 of the two. Um, but yeah, no, uh, not, not to back up, but to, to, um, accentuate the point, you know, that you made podcasting absolutely propelled everything that I've done. You know, the writing was great. I, I wound up writing, you know, eventually writing for USA Today and, you know, Lakers Nation and Hoops World and, you know, like a, a bunch of different, you know, Hoop Magazine, which was an mm -hmm. absolute honor. And all of that was fantastic. And, and, and you know, and we can get into any of that, you know, if you want. 
But the reality is none of it happens without the podcasting. So none of it happens without the opportunity to, you know, that came you know, with Sheridan Hoops. Uh, because at that time, I also started a podcast with my guy, Jameson. Shout out to my guy, Jameson Wells, one of the best in the business. Uh, <laughs> absolutely fantastic you know, guy. Um, but I started one with him. And one thing led to another. And we had Dwight Howard while he was on the Lakers on the pod. That that show in itself was an atrocious show. Atrocious. We were we didn't know what we were doing. Like conversationally, we were good, but we didn't know how to actually you know conduct an interview. So it, right. it wasn't it wasn't great. But Dwight stayed on with us for forty five minutes, and people found out. And you know, one thing led to another. People kept on hearing about it. The right piece, the right people heard about it, and I wound up working for USA. Today. I'm not joking with you. For USA Today, like four months after that interview, as a direct result of that interview. So yes, I would say podcasting wow. has absolutely been you know every bit as you know every bit as you know as as big as anything else in my journey. Well, for our listeners here, you know, again, Jabari is my guy. So this this conversation is not going to be linear. So, so you're going to have to <laughs> rock with us as stories and things come up here, um, because I guess one of my questions obviously was even going to be like, what were some of your most memorable experiences early on? So if you if you take away now um, getting into the podcast space with Chris Sheridan, but now on your own podcast now, how did you end up securing a name like Dwight Howard, you know, at, at that early stage? It's crazy how Twitter works, man. Like it, it, it really is. Uh, and and I, I would say that podcasting and Twitter have been the main driving forces behind everything that I've done. I, and 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 I'm I'm not being hyperbolic about that. But basically, in talking, you know, you know, just sharing ideas and thoughts and concepts about the NBA, I can you know I started to compile a decent little network. Mm -hmm. One thing led to another. One person said, like, "Hey, I'm friends with Dwight Howard," and blah blah blah. And I'll, I'll tell you the truth, you, couple, that face that you just made was I was like, OK, hmm. come on now. Well, on. well I'm think I'm thinking I might know who it is, but all right, keep pushing. OK, OK. Keep, keep pushing. Um, it's not the dude from South Florida. OK, it's not, it's not him. I met uh, him through that guy. OK, so okay, so um, as crazy as it sounds, the dude really knew Dwight. So like at first, you know, you're, I'm a skeptical person. I'm I'm a I'm a cynic at, you know, by, you know, by nature. And I'm like, yeah, right. Then we get on the phone with this dude, with this dude. And I'm like, wait, that's really Dwight. like that. That's not somebody doing a voice. <laughs> OK, cool, cool, cool. But that's really what it was like. There's no that, that I, I wish I had a sexier story. No, mm -hmm. I was talking that talk on Twitter and somebody hit me up saying, hey, I know Dwight. And I thought, yeah, right. Until they said, yeah, here, here you go. And I'm I'm sending you know G chats at the time with Dwight and this guy. <laughs> that's that's huge, Jabari. That that that's really huge. So when you when you look back at it now, right? Um, and we're obviously again we're jumping around here a little bit too. Why do you think that interview was was bad? Because clearly it 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 it, it landed opportunity. So is it just name recognition? But what 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 made what makes you think the interview was bad for you on your side, or are you just being you know a super super critic of yourself? No, I I'm you know so all right. So this is gonna sound like real pompous. As an artist, you <laughs> are generally super critical of yourself and sure. you know, all of that, right? But as a producer, and I've been a producer for a while now, um, that, that no longer really considers himself an artist, <laughs> you learn to just be like, no, that's terrible. <laughs> like we, if if it's be, if something stinks it stinks yeah you, you we don't have to we don't have to sugarcoat it uh but basically uh, the, the short and skin the, the short and quick on it is when we started the interview uh, prior to starting the interview the guy that set it up you know said that he wanted to lead out he said hey look it's me i i like i set this up so like i want to lead out i want to ask the first couple questions and this is what i'm gonna this is how i'm gonna handle it um and I and I'm not giving his name specifically because I don't you know, I don't mean to embarrass, but hey, yeah, it's no worries. Story. It's a funny story, and if he can't laugh about it at this point, then I don't know what to tell him. But basically, it's Jameson, myself, and the guy. We're ready to go, we're ready to rock. We got Dwight. You know, I'm sitting there nervous and sweating because I'm I'm a sweater to begin with, and uh, you know the lights on. Hey, welcome to I think it, I think our the the show name at the time was like uh, trip uh, triple. 
threat or something like that. Like, yeah, so welcome to Triple Threat. We've got a special guest and blah, 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 and I'm doing my spiel, right? And I say, we've got Dwight Howard in the house and just kick things off, my man, and almost, I almost just said his name right now. Hit it, yo, you got it. Do sister. So I'm like, okay, maybe we're having technical issues. Wait, <laughs> wait a little bit. I sent him a text message. Hey, man, you, you good? You good? Because because okay, remember, we're not insane. The, uh, he he lives on the East Coast. Yeah, he wants to go. We're and we're spread out. And I'm like, okay, man. All right, so you good? He's like, no, nah, no, nah, man. Hey, go ahead, go ahead. I was like, uh, now Dwight is sitting on the line, <laughs> and then like about. I, I always say it was like two minutes. It it was probably like 20 seconds, but 20 seconds when you're it in that situation, like, woo, sure. <laughs> that feels like that feels like 15 hours, yeah. 15 million hours. No. So but probably 20 seconds of dead air. Um, finally I look at, I, I look to James. I'm like, James, Hey, and he's like, and, and shout out to my man. He, you know, he, he asked a rough question to start because we were like a little bit discombobulated. Uh, we, cause we, like I said, we had a plan. We had, we had the first 15 plays scripted and my man said, we're going to call an audible right off audible. the rip, <laughs> right <laughs> off the rip. Not only are we going to call an audible, you the quarterback, but oh, I'm, I'm the defensive tackle. Or, or, I'm not even on that side of the ball. <laughs> he said, nah, you the quarterback. <laughs> but basically it, you can imagine well uh, with a start like you know with a you know with a start like that uh how the conversation went but as crazy as it was dwight was you know like dwight's a lot of things but dwight's a genuine cat like yeah. he's like you like no matter what you feel about him he's a you know first battle hall of famer just to be clear just get, you know get that out, out the way but he's a genuine cat lots of introspect i wish i i wish i still had the interview like this is this is how bad i was i don't even have the i have access to the interview anymore i don't know where if it exists you know like you know wow. if it still exists anywhere but he gave all types of introspection. He talked about the struggles that he had growing up. He talked about struggles with his mom. He talked about like, you know, like his path, his true journey to the league. So it was great stuff. There was some great stuff in there. It just wasn't structured. And, you know, it, it, you had three, you know, three bumbling idiots trying to figure it out. <laughs> all up well, to the other two. Well, yeah, all due respect. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's really interesting to kind of see how something like that, you know, as an artist, as you're alluding to, you can now reflect on that. And even in that moment, feel like it wasn't X, like it wasn't what you wanted it to be. Yeah. But still, still the name recognition of the fact that, hey, you got this guy on your show, no matter how big or small this guy is, you know, in the NBA, as you alluded to, you know, even at that time was on a Hall of Fame project trajectory, et cetera, et cetera. And was on your show, your name attached with his, you know, and that propelled you into the, the next annals, if you will, of, of your career, man. So congrats, because like that, that's that's a big time. Would you say that was the first big get of in the first big interview or the first one you did in the podcast space that was that large? It was the first one I did in the podcast space that was that large for sure. Um, when I was uh, doing the producing for Sheridan Hoops. Uh, like I, it, it was crazy to do this, but like I, you know, like reached out to Charles Barkley, bam, you know, he, you know, he was on. Wow. Reached out to Phil Jackson, like I, I made the call to Phil, like, hey, you know, Phil, how you doing? He's like, yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, are you, uh, are you, are you, you know, do you, do you need to know what we're talking about? No, I think, I think we're good here. Wow. <laughs> so like, yeah, you know, I had the opportunity to, inter to interact with, you know, with a lot, you know, some true luminaries. There were others as well. I just can't. Those are the, just the first who that came to mind. Uh, but in my own personal space, yeah, that was definitely Dwight was by far the biggest name, the biggest name that I had interacted with at that time. So before we go to break, we're going to ask you this last question. In any of that, you know, when those in those early days, did at any point, did you feel intimidated? Did palm sweat? Shaky when, you know, shaky voice. Hey, uh, Mr. Jackson or Mr. Barkley, or did you get any of that come, go, going in? Because, I, I, again, I can't front when my some of my first big interviews, like I fumbled that first question, right? Because I'm oh, just yeah. like, oh, shit, this is a big moment. You know, how? but when you're making that call, you know, can, can you walk us through some of that, too? Or the first name, like, oh, this is really X's number, and you got to make that call to, to get them on the show. Absolutely. I mean, Warren, you know me well enough, uh, but, I, you know, yeah, I'll acknowledge it. I was extremely nervous. I was nervous as all hell. Um, anytime I had to call like any of those folks, that was one thing. One time I was thrown in the mix. 
uh, to host the Sharing and Hoops podcast without any prior preparation. Um, cool. And I did that with uh, with one of the Kamenetsky brothers. I think it was Brian Kamenetsky. He was awesome. Um, both of them are awesome, but you know, I did. It was, I'm pretty sure it was Brian. But the one time, or the, the time that stands out the most is, well, one time I was in the scrum and I tried to ask Kobe a question and he kind of gave me that, like, shut the fuck up. Excuse me. <laughs> I apologize. He kind of gave me that that Kobe look. Yeah. Um, but the worst was Paul Millsap. Paul Millsap, I, I yep. It's cr- I don't know what it was. I don't know if Paul said, I don't like this dude. I don't know if I reminded him of a cousin that were, that borrowed three grand from him or something like that. <laughs> but Paul Millsap, after a Lakers uh, and Hawks game, I think it was. Um, so we're talking like 2013, 14, you know, like somewhere in that range. But anyway, um, I, you know, I go up to him. You know, I, get, I, you know, I asked the PR guy because you know how it goes. You know, for anybody that's not aware of how the you know the locker room goes, uh, if it's you know most a lot of the players, you can just you walk directly up to them. Some of the stars of the teams, you have to go through the PR guy, or you know, depending upon the situation, right? So I go through the PR guy. PR guy says, "Yeah, go ahead, man, do your thing." I go up to Paul. Hey, how you doing? He's like, "I'm a, I'm almost done." I'm like, "Oh, hey, no problem." You know what? I apologize. Rookie mistake on my part. You know, he's, he's he had his back to me, so I should have known. Hey, give him his time. Fair. Anyway, when he turns around, he turns around, and I'm gonna do it for you. He goes like this. All right. I'm sitting there like shaking. I'm sitting there shaking. So I asked him. I asked him a first question. I actually fire off a good one. Oh, okay, you know, and and, and I, you know, I I relate it to his performance in the game because you know that's what they tell you to do, like you know, disarm them by acknowledging that you paid attention to something, you know, a part of what they did in that it you know in that game. So I hit him with one of those. He hits me with like basically like a five word answer, right? And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, okay, okay, oh, okay. Well, hey, you, you know, you guys are in the middle of a road trip and blah 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 blah. And he goes, Yeah, man. Blah, blah, blah. Like, that's his attitude. That's his tone the whole time. Oof. We're doing we did that back and forth for about three minutes, man. I was sweating so profusely. I had to just <laughs> I just left. I didn't even like I was like, yeah, we're done here. Like my time here is done. I was pat I was patching you in, in the fourth quarter, AC Green in the eighty in the eighty six in the eighty six playoffs, all glistened and glossy. So yeah, um, those types of experiences were pretty rough early on, but honestly, by and large, for the most part, the players are awesome. Like they yeah. they 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 they'll give you the time. They sometimes if you just catch you know just like any other human being, if you catch somebody at the wrong moment or for whatever reason, like I said, if I remind him of some some dude that put a faulty carburetor in you know like in in his ride you know twenty years ago, <laughs> it might have just been that issue. The human side of this is what many people do not understand. And on the other side of this break, I want to talk a little bit more about that. And, you know, some of the non-glamorous aspects of it as well, too, you know, for anybody who might be looking to get into this injury, we're talking with Jabari Davis, iHeart producer. Um, We'll be right back here on the other side of this break here in Dope Interviews. Are you ready to step up your style without compromising the planet? Introducing the exciting partnership between Blueview Footwear and the 19 Media Group Network. Just visit bit.ly backslash BlueView19 to start your sustainable style journey. Our friends over at BlueView Footwear are renowned for introducing the world's first fully biodegradable sneaker. By using plant-based plastics, they are leading a revolution in cleaner materials and manufacturing. They have sleek and contemporary styles that cater to a wide range of tastes. BlueView Footwear believes that fashion and sustainability can coexist harmoniously. Explore their incredible collection of eco-friendly footwear by visiting bit.ly backslash blueview19. If you let us know you made a purchase, we'll shout you out on our next show. Again, just visit bit.ly backslash blueview19 today and you'll see the ultimate collaboration of fashion, sustainability, and media excellence. And we're back on Dope Interviews, brought to you by the Mighty 19 Media Group. My guy, Jabari Davis, in the building. Make sure you follow him on Twitter at Jabari Davis MBA. Jabari, um... Before the break, we were talking a little bit about, you know, some of the non-glamorous side, if you will, to sometimes when you even as a journalist, like, hey, the athletes or the the talent can be somewhat intimidating. One thing that I personally do not love, I just took my family with me to summer league and, you know, trying to get them to understand of some of what it is. It's the waiting. Like, you know, I'm, I'm at a certain stage of my life right now. You know, I'm in my 40s, bro. Like just waiting around for a dude is not the most exciting thing for me in, in, in any capacity. Um, talk to me a little bit about some of the struggles that maybe you had with 
what the industry makes you do coming up as a writer, even as, and even as a podcaster. So what are the, some of the things that you've had to deal with and just overcome? As crazy as it's going to sound, I haven't had like it hasn't been that difficult from that side of things but i will tell you the waiting yes the older i get i'm I, like you i'm in my mid i'm in my 40s as well yeah. um you know like the, the sitting around waiting you know hurry up hurry up to wait you know your know, aspect of it is it you know isn't my favorite but i'm going to tell you the most difficult part no matter what has always been the guy not the player it's his boy or yeah. the handler or the you know the the PR you know the, the PR person, and let me just make this clear. Let me just you know, but they're doing their jobs. They are doing what they're you know what he you know what they are you know being asked to do. So I recognize that. But I honest to goodness, the most difficulty, yeah, like the most difficulty I've, I've ever had was one hundred percent with like, hey, um, you know, you know, we're set up for a remote you know like interview, right? Everything is set up. Everything is you know like everything is completely fine. There's nothing, you know, nothing wrong. Do you guys hear a buzz? Do you guys hear like a hum? I feel like that's going to throw, that's going to throw that person off, blah, 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 blah. No, like we don't really, I mean, well, there's a natural buzz with all of this machinery, natural hum, whatever, but yeah, yeah that's, that's just not going to work. And like, like that type of stuff happening and being canceled on in the moment. Yeah. Wow. It, yeah. For, you know, for no rhyme or reason, you know, type deal. <laughs> Um, you know, there, there are always folks that like, you know, like kind of like what we alluded to earlier, like you catch them on the wrong day, you know, you can definitely, you know, sense a vibe, but more than anything, it really was, it really, the more difficult aspect of all of this has been, you know, dealing with the, with the go-betweens. Hmm. So let me ask you this as well, too. So, you know, one of the things that I know I personally struggled with, and I, I won, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was Durant, you know, came out with the blog boy references, right? Oh, man. Yeah. And so to, to, you know, to my knowledge, correct me, you know, I didn't go to school, right, for journalism, mm -hmm. so to speak. I just happened to have a natural ability to be able to write somewhat proficiently. Yeah. And um, when the blog boy craze came about and blog talk radio was doing oh, what boy. it was doing in the whole nine, did you get caught up in, in any of that? And did you did you feel intimidated in any capacity kind of when the blog boy references became so because then nationally trained media they were like, oh, yes, they like they, that was like their hill to die on. They were like, thank you for Kevin Durant for saying all the things. Why are these whippersnappers in the locker rooms, you know, shoulder to shoulder with me when I put X amount of years? And did you struggle with that in any capacity? I, I won't lie. It stung a little bit when he first said it because I was like, oh, shit, I'm a blog boy. OK, that's <laughs> cool. That's cool. Uh, let me reevaluate my situation in my whole life. No, I like it, it was one of those where when I heard it, I was like, oh, OK, man. All right. But I knew what it was like when the national media like and, and it wasn't all national media, but they were definitely some folks that were definitely, you know, that latched on to it. You know, like as you described, yeah. when they started doing that, I said, like, oh, y'all just hear the footsteps, man. And that's cool. Like, that's cool. Like, I, I like, look, don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking on Stephen A. Smith's door anytime soon. But we we as blog boys, as blog boy nation have been able to carve out at least a niche. And right. to be honest with you, it's more than this niche, you know, by this stage. There are many, you know, many of us have actually started and continued and maintained careers as a result of being blog boys. So I guess I could say this. While nobody likes a pejorative nickname, at the end of the day, if your bills are getting paid, you know what I'm saying? If you could go on a, a trip to Vegas, if you can do these things as a result of it, hey, call me what you want, but call me paid. Say word, say word, snaps to that man. I feel like we're in, in, in a class right now, bro. That was that was <laughs> definitely definitely knowledge that I dropped right there too. Yeah, I think it was really interesting, you know, because you know I, I want it's what I want to say is because from the blog boy situation, right? Then it's interesting because some of us who have been able to make a little bit of hay in in mm -hmm. whatever capacity into the media space now, right? We see another shift. And the other shift is the players now telling their own damn story. So the players are now their own blog boys, <laughs> if you will. And some and I and it's so funny to see some of the uh, people that are caught up in that, you know, kind of that that wave, if you will. Now looking back and saying, well, why don't the players let us do <laughs> what we do? And the players are taking their own kind of uh, step and putting their own hands on it. What are your thoughts on that aspect of it as media continues to shift and change and evolve? I'm glad they're doing it. And specifically because like, I think if you are good enough at what you do, like, like speaking generally, like, like folk, th those of us, we can enter those spaces. 
we can work our way into those spaces and, and be right alongside them with like telling their stories. I think if you are, you know, crafty enough, if you are, you know, also fortunate enough. And I don't think we and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to make the point because I don't think we acknowledge this enough. There's a great deal of fortune that comes from any success, any success. So I think those of us that, you know, t- you know th- th- that are on it, we can get in those spaces with them. But no, um, uh, uh, in terms of players, you know, now telling their own story, we always want we always said we wanted it. We always, you know, like said, like, oh, they don't communicate, like they won't open up. They won't like let us know the real them. Well, now they're doing it. Yeah. Now, do I love all of the content? No, but I don't love all the content on TV. I don't love all the content that I've personally produced. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I can't be too mad at it. I I I think eventually there's gonna be kind of like a meeting in the middle where the sports media landscape is always going to be kind of a, a, a comprehensive and, 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 and it's always going to, you know, it's always going to kind of shift with the trends, but I think there's a, there, there's a, there, there's a, there's a happy middle ground there where you can have a certain level of professionalism or journalistic background, but at the same time have, you know, like have the folks that have like, been through the fires that have, I, I won't, I, I don't like to use like been through the wars, but you know, been through the fires, go, you know, achieved a certain level of athletic prowess. So yeah. I, I, I think we're working our way towards that. And, and it, it, I, I, I think the, the sports fan will benefit from it. Uh, that last point I think is really, really, really important. Right. Cause the, there's so much content that I can, it's as, as almost naive as this is going to sound like it's such a wide world. Like there's so yeah. many things and there's so many, avenues of content that some people like to consume what i like you may not like and so forth yep. and so forth and i'm amazed sometimes when i go through the internet and and just see some of the things like why does that have you know 1.5 billion views if you will i'm just like yeah that's literally that? nonsense <laughs> you know yeah. but again there's there's a niche and love for everybody and i think you know as players tell their stories and as we as media tell tell they'll tell their stories as well too there's going to be a lane. I think, you know, you hit the nail on the head with that 1000%. What I want to ask you now is a little bit more, um, you know, we've talked a little bit about stories, you know, some of the highlights and, and, and moments in your career, but one of, can you tell me about a story that might've touched you? Like when you, when you, when you interviewed a player, athlete, media executive, even may, or, or whatever the case may be, where you found out something about them that was like truly profound you know, where you like, maybe you went into that situation thinking one thing about them one way or another, and then learned so much about them that really maybe touched your heart in a way that you weren't expecting. Truth be told, not, not to circle back, but the Dwight Howard story really mm-hmm. was that like, that really was, I, I had no idea of the, the struggles that he had, you know, coming up. I had no idea of some of the, like the family issues that he had coming up. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm delicate about how I even uh, word that, but Hey, the, the information's out there. You y'all, y'all can go. Surely. Um, all right, another. I'll I'll also start, uh, tie in a, 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 a previous question. Pau Gasol finding out that Pau Gasol was legitimately the most genuine and sincere guy ever was incredible, and I'll wow. tell you how it happened. Same situation in the scrum. This is the same. This might have been the same season. Even I'm I'm early on. I'm you know you know bright eyed, bushy tailed. You know all of those things, right? But then when it came to you know getting in the scrum and asking questions, I would always like kind of you know stay to the side, purposely stay to the side, and you know like oh I couldn't quite get in there, but you know like I'll I'll use the audio, I'll use you, you know like I'll use it <laughs> whatever, right? Pal sees this, and I'm I'm this is not one of those where I'm bullshit. I'm not BSing you, man. Like Pal sees this, I go to ask him a question right before PR says like okay that's it and then whatever like you know and like everybody breaks out. Pal goes like this. Like just a quick little tap on the shoulder. Like, what do you need? Hmm. I don't really get all sentimental about a lot of things, but I was I was damn near in tears by the end of that conversation. It was about a forty five second conversation. Asked two questions, but the since like it maybe it was an, a minute and a half, but asked just a few questions, and it was a like actual humanity. He sure. looked at a guy and said, that guy's nervous. That guy is uncomfortable as all hell. But I've seen him here a couple times. Let me help him out. 
I, I I won't lie to you. Like even right now, like I have that same feeling. Like I'm not yeah. about to cry on you. You're not gonna give me the cry, Roy. No, <laughs> I'm not about to cry on you. But like I I still feel that feeling because like honestly, like I, I am a, I am an individual that is not uh, comfortable you know, like in that setting. And to have that, you know, like to have that guy go out of his way after you know, like and he made sure that everybody walked away because he could see like what the situation was. But yeah, like that that that's one of those ones. That's dope, Jabari. Yeah. Like real talk. You know, and I think when you're there's a lot of things that sports media is um, and it can be very frustrating, very time consuming, long hours and you feel just unrewarded. But stuff like that, you know, when, a, when an athlete, again, even puts his hand on your on your shoulder and says something like that, you know, I think, again, that's 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 massive. And so I, I really appreciate you being able to share that story with us here because um, it's not always glamorous. <laughs> and there's yeah. a lot more, you know, yeah. rough times. I think I've told you I almost got into it with an athlete one time and I was, you know, <laughs> you know, surprised at my own reaction at, you know, what was kind of even taking place. And, um, you know, you've got to you got to figure that out. Last couple ones here before we let you get out of here. Um, most viral positive or negative uh, interaction that you've had on social media by content you put out. So positive and negative. Ooh, man, you know, I tweet a lot and I've had, I had, I've had a couple bangers, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to think <laughs> it was, um, there, it was something in 2020. I don't remember. I can't, I on I'm not, I'm not playing the role. I can't remember right. exactly how it phrased, but it was something in 2020 and it was related to, oh, Jordan, Jordan donated to like a black cause, like for like, and, and anybody that knows you know, Jordan, if you listen to this, y'all can figure it out. Um, mm -hmm. Traditionally, back in the day, at least the, the word on the streets was that he wasn't really looking out. So he donated to a black cause. And I think I said like, oh, shit, George, um, Black Lives Matter in six. Now that Jordan is on is on the team. <laughs> and the <laughs> <laughs> <You're> wild, <laughs> but so that actually qualifies for both the positive and the negative because those of us that like to just get jokes off we yo know, we got our jokes off and then there are people like oh my god you know this is a serious blah 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 you, you, you know how that goes i man. do I you do. know exactly how that goes but oh, yeah man. that was a, that was a funny one that was a fun one that can... well right now you are doing great work at iheart radio um, producing uh, the great show Mad Boosties. Um, also had a show with Robert Horry, NBA Finals File as well too. Uh, if you, if for what you're able to share and divulge, just kind of how did you get to that seat where you are currently right now with iHeartRadio? Because that is obviously a major deal, and we are obviously very proud of you, my brother. You know what I mean? You've uh, you've definitely graduated up, and we we love to see it. But uh, tell the fans, and listeners, a little bit how you personally were able to land that for what what you're able to divulge. No, I, I, can, I can tell you, I'll be straight up about it. I was working with some incredible individuals at 19 Media Group. Uh, we, we were busting our ass. You know, we were, you know, just put, you know, putting our passion, you know, putting our passion out there, whether it was on the pen, you know, you know with the pen or the microphone or anything or the, you know, the, the, the video camera or anything and beyond. And obviously there were steps along the way beforehand, but I had interacted with a, a couple people from my heart. And at the time that I was working with 19 Media Group, and shout out to everybody, you know, everybody with 19, um, they reached out to me and said, like, hey, we noticed that, you know, you know, you've been doing this for a long time. And, you know, we saw that, you, you know, that, you know, that you even put together a, like a group of sorts. They didn't really know what it was, but like, I'm, <laughs> I, and I'm not just flattering. I'm not just, you know, being flattering here, Warren. Like it, it, it absolutely played a role in that, you know, in that opportunity. So I'm forever grateful and forever indebted to everybody with 19 and everybody that has been a part of that process even before. Five. But basically they had heard my stuff. They'd seen it work. They saw that I had put something together. They made, uh, they being iHeart made a deal or, you know, came to a, an agreement with the NBA that they would produce, you know, you know, like all the NBA's podcasts and exclusive content and all, all of that good stuff. So they said, what you got? So this is like December. I feel like it was December 2021, I think. Right. Um, or November 2021. Um, I you know, I go into a meeting, I I I pitch a couple ideas. Uh, I didn't think any I didn't know that you know whether anything would come of it or not. Uh, and then I didn't hear anything for a month. So I was like, okay, well, you know, that that was cool. I hear back from them, they say, Hey, we have this, 
we have this thing in mind. I don't know if you would be interested in it, but it would be, you know, talking about the NBA finals and maybe we'll get an NBA player. And I said, you have my attention. <laughs> Do you ever? So, I, you know, obviously I was, it didn't matter who they found, but they gave me a list. And I don't know if it's gauche to like give the names on the list. Well, no, it's not because like I was like, hell yes to all of them. But the list consisted of Chris Bosch, Robert Ory, Derek Fisher, and like one other. Uh, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but not for remembering it. Yeah, but it was like, yes, thank you. Clearly, we've talked. Clearly, we've talked. We so, I said, so I said, so uh, I said, hell yes, every single one. Yes, yes. The one I didn't actually, I was like, Robert Ory ain't going to do this show, man. Come on. <laughs> I don't know why I had some, like, un ridiculous confidence that others would. But I thought, like, and for whatever reason, you know, JR, you know, he wasn't available. You know, respect to him. Chris Bosh wasn't available. Respect to him. I understand, man. You know, a Hall of Famer, you know, you do your thing. Um, And it came down and they said, hey, you know, Robert Ory is actually interested. I said, I don't care what it takes. Yes, the answer is <laughs> one million percent. Yeah, I'm talking like I'm organizing stuff and I'm I'm in charge. They, 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 they're like, okay, settle down, mouthpiece. You just, <laughs> you, you, just you you you're not the coal that you know that that, that fuels this engine. You just the, the little conductor. <laughs> um. So basically, one thing led to another. You know, we go into negotiations. Uh, we we finally settle. We start. You know, we start that show. Uh. Uh, spring uh, 2022 uh, at the same time I had the opportunity and as you mentioned it and thank you for mentioning them Miles Gray and Jack O'Brien are are absolutely fantastic I, I I owe them a great deal they were the ones that actually pulled me into the first meetings to begin with because mm -hmm. I had interacted with them and done their show the Daily Zeitgeist um, you know, like you know, like in, in the past um, so yeah like like basically one thing led all of those steps along the way led me to there. You know, like it doesn't happen without any of them. It certainly doesn't happen without 19 Media Group. But I've been working with iHeart for the past year and a half now. I had a, you know, a 20 episode run with NBA Finals file. Robert Ory was absolutely. Fake. I mean, you you know how I feel about Robert Ory, man. Like, yeah. I, folks, I grew up in Los Angeles in the 1980s. I I watched the Showtime Lakers. Then I, you know, the the Shaq and Kobe Lakers were my team. That was my squad. So. You can you can imagine how I feel about Robert Ory. So basically, you know, I had a great run with him. We didn't get a second season, but to be honest with you, it would have been difficult to put together another ten series to break down. Um, so you know, uh, uh, no, you know, um, uh, no remorse there, no regrets there. Uh, but NBA Finals foul, and, and the last I'll say on it is, there are shows for everybody, kind of like what you alluded to. There's shows for everybody. If, if you like the X's and O's stuff, you might listen to Nate Duncan or, you know, Nikias and Steve and, and those guys. And, and, and they do a fantastic job breaking down the X's and O's and the ins and outs of the game. If you like both the X's and O's and like so with, you know, with some um, with some flavor to it. You might want to go to NBA baseline, the big, you know, the, you, you might want to go to Warren and Cal if you want some jokes. And you're trying to have a good time, and you're trying to, you know, hey, look, you know, respecting and honoring the, you know, the history of the game, but really just laughing about the absurdity that we are getting paid to listen and talk about basketball. Well, then you come on over here to Mad Boosties because we're bringing <laughs> it. Great guests, great conversations, good times. One thousand percent correct. And you know, for our fans and listeners out there, make sure you do tap in with Jabari and what he's doing at Heart Radio. The Mad Boosty Show with Miles and Jack is phenomenal. I've been an opportunity, had an opportunity to be on it myself, but more importantly, just what they do on a week to week basis really is light, it's airy, it's fun, and you will guarantee to get a laugh out of it, my guy. Trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. Jabari, before we wrap up, any any advice you can give to anybody looking to kind of be the next Jabari Davis, you know, how do they get into podcast producing? What steps would they take? Um, you know, before we sign off, I'm not being funny about this, but I don't recommend uh, trying to you know, follow my path because I'm not joking with you. It's about as unconventional as they come. No, like truth be told, if you have a passion for you know storytelling, if you have a passion for production, if you have a passion for writing, whatever it is, just go for it, man. Because like, I meant what I said, you know, like kind of, you know, kind of in the opening. The worst thing that can happen is it doesn't work out. And ultimately, 
if you, you know, like if, if you gave it your all, like you, you, you can't really have any regrets about things. But chances are you're probably going to have some some success. So, my you know my my best my biggest piece of advice is have some belief in yourself and just go for it. My guy, one thousand percent appreciate the time that you've been able to give to us here today. There's so much more we could even get into. So part two is probably on the way at some point. But as always, um, we thank you so much for your time. He is a great Jabari Davis. Make sure you're following him on Twitter at Jabari Davis NBA. Make sure you're following everything he does over at the iHeart Radio Network. Great, great, amazing content for the, for this for this episode. You know, we're gonna wrap it up here, man. This is again, I'm your guy Warren Shaw here. Dope interviews, 19 Media Group. He is Jabari Davis, and this has been another dope interview. We're out. Together we stand, divided we never. The vision is one, striving for the better. Working as a team, working toward a dream. It's not even work when the team is the dream. On a united front, we got our own back. A band of brothers to counteract any attack. One heart and fact. Forget what the blood say Dope is what flows in this fam's DNA So let's do it for the love Give to the max Listen to opinion but react to facts And remember that together with a sh But separate Just pieces of it Shoot no Dope is what flows in this fam's DNA Dope is what flows in this fam's DNA Family represent like a tree with names on it. We're free, no chains on it. Relieve the pain's gone. I can see. We come together like questions on the quiz. Mojo flow and viz, man, you know what it is. And if ignorance is bliss, you're gonna hate this lesson. Organized intellect like a tropical depression. My symbol is the cross, a mic and ghost peppers. Cause I'm just a black sheep growing up to be a shepherd. Moonlighting as a weapon to protect the children. Every brother is a father. Dynasties we're building. Max, J, and K, Bay, Bay, and I, Zay, next level of the family foundation. Understand me?